What do I eat in a day on my 1600 mile walk from Canada to Los Angeles? Today, I'm gonna take you along for a day in my life of food. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, foraging along the road, and more. Join me. I've walked seven miles already today and it's past 10 o'clock, which means it's breakfast time. Today, like many days, I'm having oatmeal. I'm starting off with two handfuls of oats, raisins, coconut shreds, and sunflowers. That I'm soaking in some water for the right consistency with a little apple cider vinegar, some green powder, a little bit of salt, ginger, and coconut oil. We've got some local honey. We've got a nice heaping spoonful of peanut butter. And then we have ample pumpkin spice. Ooh. So I love intermittent fasting, which for me is 6 p.m. till 10 a.m. I don't eat. So this is me breaking my fast. And I love to not eat until my stomach feels ready, until I'm actually hungry and my stomach feels empty and loose. So this is the first bite in about 16 or 17 hours. Ooh, not bad at all. But eating on the road out in front of the Ferndale Library I'm eating good on the road. So we'll head out from here. We'll do some foraging. We'll have lunch and dinner and we'll see what we get into. Of course, hydration is of the absolute essence. I carry about a gallon at a time with me and I fill up wherever I can. Sometimes it's springs and wells and other times it's city water. Before I hit the road, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, or sometimes fire cider. Woo! That helps with digestion. And then I've got a little bit of elderberry syrup as well, some natural and tasty medicine. And this walking cart is absolutely key because with this cart, I can carry this nourishing food. Whereas on my back, I can't carry all of that. So I've got about eight more miles left in the day and I'll see you where I see you next. I'm about 10 miles in and it's time for a little roadside snack. I see some blackberries over here. Mm. It's late fall, but that's the taste of summer. It's really the end of blackberry season, but I'm still coming across the occasional smorgasbord and every day some blackberries. And I have to say, the idea of doing this whole trip on 100% foraged food, I don't have time or energy for that. It's probably, it's technically possible. However, I think it's very clear that I could do this whole trip not buying any fruits and vegetables, just foraging for fruits and vegetables and eating from gardens along the way. So a couple other snacks for now. We've got a little bit of mustard to snack on here. We got the mustard flowers. Varies from plant to plant. This one's got a spicy kick, but a strong broccoli vibe going on. And then we also have some little fennel flowers here. This is a very scant little spot. I'm in an area where there's not a lot, but even where there's not a lot, 
there's still food to be eaten. Fennel tips, fennel flowers. And then here we have plantago, which is a great medicine. This is an older plant, not really in ideal condition, but I'm gonna get this young and tender leaf from the center. That's nice and tender. So right here on the side of the road, I managed to get in some food and medicine, a little snack to keep me going down the road. It's both a uh, physical and mental morale boost. Thank you, plants. Hawthorn. This is a fall abundance. I bet you many of you have passed by Hawthorn without knowing that this is edible. Mmm. What a joy to have some Hawthorn. Roadside eggs. I absolutely love this. So this is one of my favorite ways to get food from the roadside, fresh from the farm. Take a look at that. You don't get that at the grocery store. That might even be a double yolk right there. Yeah, I absolutely love finding food on the side of the road. And I'm a little sad though, because I have a dozen eggs already and they're boiled. I do my hard boiled eggs for the road. So I'm gonna put these back. But a lot of people have been sharing funds with me, uh, $5 here, dollar there. And I love that and I love to get to pay it forward. So I'm gonna leave this here for them. Supporting local small farms. I love it. miles in about and I am ready for lunch and this one's gonna be tasty. I've got two hard-boiled eggs, some kimchi, mustard, some local bread, and then I used garlic and onion powder, salt, and some Italian spices, plus olive oil and apple cider vinegar. And then to give it that foraging touch, at least a touch, I've got a little bit of lamb's quarter for some greens. I've got some radish flowers, and I'm excited for this, the radish pods. Let's see if you can hear the crunch. I bet you heard that. So a pretty tasty little meal here. At the beginning of this trip, I was really struggling with my diet. I was honestly eating a, a fair bit of junk food I was eating at a lot of restaurants. The food at the restaurants was a lot of factory farm foods. I was eating some junk food from the store and I was getting a lot more packaged stuff than needed and some processed stuff. But I'm happy to report that I have a system down. I am eating delicious, nutritious, wholesome, nourishing foods and I don't even have an interest in the restaurants right now. Fennel, I don't carry many snacks because I don't have much self-control. And if I carry them, I just end up eating them. So I keep the snacks to a minimum, but there's still those spoonfuls of peanut butter. And of course, if I have bread. Night 
nightshade berries. American nightshade berries. Most of them are not ripe yet, but there's got to be some ripe ones. Uh, here's at least one right here. Oh, here's a cluster of them. Just have a few for now. The other thing I wanted to say about not having snack foods is that by not having snack foods, I find more of them on the side of the road. All right, it's getting close to night. I gotta get set up on a campsite. <laughs> Okay, 15 miles down and camp is set up. I'm doing what's called stealth camping, which is where you're kind of hiding somewhere. Although I don't think anybody would mind that I'm here. But it's time for dinner. So what I have are the different uh, greens and flowers that I foraged. I've got mustard, nasturtium, nasturtium leaves, plantago, radish flowers, radish pods, lamb's quarter and malo so pretty nice pretty ideal and then i've got local smoked tuna that was gifted to me by my hosts in trinidad thank you to larkin and kathy very much and then i have some local ferments as well made by a host my host vanessa back in eureka thank you vanessa and then we've got bread uh, olive oil tahini some herbs and spices and the key spice for tonight is curry oh yeah one of the things i love about this is the anti-inflammatory power of the turmeric and the ginger which i have a lot of and then a little bit of garlic as well is going to go fresh garlic and fresh garlic i try to eat that every day my food is my medicine and there's a lot of medicine here along with the along with the sustenance oh my god <laughs> look at this creation <laughs> so some people would just not believe that i actually eat like this on the road and i'll be honest well of course that's my objective is to be honest it might be a little prettier than if you weren't here. But this is what I eat. This is absolutely what I eat. And stick on this chunk of bread. Now I will say this ended up being a little bit too big and I don't like to eat too big of a meal at night. So Brooklyn is gonna be the benefactor, the beneficiary of me making too large of a meal. She'll get to enjoy, enjoy some of this as well. So it's almost six o'clock. And I try to be done eating at six o'clock. That way I get in my intermittent fast until 10 o'clock tomorrow. And I did want to show you, I have my stove here and my pot. And this is a meal that required no cooking whatsoever. As you can see, at least on site, no cooking. I love to cook over the fire and I have been on this trip but there's been a burn ban for the majority of this trip and so I haven't been. And I have been also taking it easy on myself and I've just been spending more money. Uh, if I wasn't spending money on, if I wasn't spending as much money on food, then cooking would be absolutely necessary because for example, rice is a lot less expensive than bread. And the time that I do most of my cooking is when I'm at uh, my, ho my host's home or if I'm doing an off day at a campground. And that's where I'll boil up a dozen eggs to take on the road. I'll often boil up a whole pot of rice and that'll last me a day or two on the road. So I utilize the stove when I'm staying at a friend's house or I'll cook when I'm staying at a campground. And I absolutely love having my little stove. This is a wood-fired stove, so I can pretty much anywhere find wood, whether I'm in a campground, in a city park, 
in someone's backyard on the roadside to start a fire, as long as I'm not in the burn ban. And that's coming soon since uh, winter's coming and the rainy season is coming. So another thing I want to say on the, you know, I have a lot of greens on here and some of them are spicy greens and some of them are sort of, sort of bitter. They're strong flavors. Actually, there's no bitters here, but strong flavors. And the key to the neutralizing those strong flavors is a lot of olive oil. So you got your fat, tahini, another fat, and then your acid like vinegar or lemon. So let's give it a try. Oh. That's powerful. I'd say it's a little heavy on something. But it's near perfection. So I want to talk a little bit about where I get this food. I try as much as possible to shop either at the local food co-op or a health food store. In Eureka, a couple days ago, I stopped into their bulk goods section. And from the dry goods, I get things like oats, coconut flakes, raisins, sunflower seeds. I get a lot of my herbs there and spices from their urban spice dry goods section. I can fill up my oil, like my olive oil. Some even have coconut oil in the bulk section. And then peanut butter and other nut butters. At the Eureka Food Co-op, there was even tahini. And now when I do go to the co-op, uh, there's a good chance I'm gonna get a cookie. And I do have a sweet tooth. That's why I don't have sweets out on the road with me. I just take opportunities when they are in front of me. If not the food co-op, then a health food store. And then otherwise just sort of a standard grocery store if that's what I have access to, as well as of course, the roadside produce stands and eggs. I also want to mention my morning and evening tea. I haven't had any tea today. However, on many days I do. So my go-tos are a medicinal mushroom blend in the morning or dandelion and chicory root that are roasted. And then in the evening, I tend to have a sleepy time tea that could have chamomile and many other different herbs. And then one of my other go-to beverages is water with apple cider, lemon, and ginger, and turmeric. Ideally warmed, but I do have that cold on the road sometimes. What I'm eating is designed for me. I'm not really telling anybody else what to do here at all. I'm not. I'm just doing the best that I can to nourish myself and be doing it in a way that is in the most harmony with the earth that I'm able to right now. And so my top priority isn't really my health. This isn't a diet that's absolutely optimized by, for my health. It's the health of the planet, the health of animals, the health of plants, and the health of myself that are all, cons that are all taken into consideration with this. My top priority is whole, unprocessed foods. Almost everything that I'm eating right now is whole foods that are unprocessed or minimally processed. With that is unpackaged, of course, as much as possible buying from the bulk section. I also do focus on buying organic food and the absolute goal is to source local food. And I'm not, I guess what I'll say is that I feel pretty happy with what I'm pulling off here. I'm not as on my game as I'd like to be. For example, I'm utilizing more plastic and creating more plastic waste than I'd like to. But overall, I'm feeling really solid about what I'm manage managing to do. Now, it's nothing like when I did my year of growing and foraging all my food, like so many of you have seen, or my month of literally foraging 100% of my food. So if you really wanna dive into that, I just released my new book, Food Freedom, which is the story of my year of growing and foraging all my food. And it's also an empowerment manual to help you to break free from the grocery store. And it gives, it goes so deep into the industrial food system, analyzing it and describing what's the truth behind our food. And it also gives all these other options, all these alternatives that you can dive into. So if you got something out of this video, I would highly recommend looking into that book. 
It is available as an experiment in the gift economy. So you can order a paperback book and it's available on a donation basis. And then it's also available as an ebook and you can download that and you can make a donation or get that for free, whatever you prefer. So I encourage you to, to read that and dive into that. It's a really solid deep dive into our food system and how you can break free. I'm so grateful to have been here on this day in the life of eating on my walk from Canada to Los Angeles. I'm about 800 miles in and three months in, so I have about 750-ish miles to go. And I have a lot more foraging ahead of me, more co-ops to stop into, certainly some more cookies. And if you do come and find me, I would say bring cookies, but don't bring me a whole like bag of cookies, just bring one. Someone back in Trinidad gave me two bags of cookies and I ate eight or nine of them in a couple of hours. And uh, it was too much. So one cookie if you're coming to find me on the road. All right, I love you all so much and looking forward to seeing you back here for the next video.